Hello everyone, Dear Future Children is uh, being selected uh, to the International Creative Documentaries uh, competition this year at the International Film Festival and Forum on Human Rights in, in Geneva. The film portrays three women activists fighting around the globe. And uh, we're very proud because it's the international premiere of this very important film. And we are here today with the film director, Franz Bohm from Germany. Hello, Franz, how are you? I'm very fine. Thanks for the invite. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. You. So my first question is obvious. I know you hate that I mentioned it, but you're 20 years old. And so uh, you're probably and, and for sure the youngest filmmaker in the international creative documentaries um, selection since the beginning of the festival. So congratulations. Is it is it your first film? Um, well, it's my first feature length film. But, you know, when you mention my age, obviously, I may be, you know, the youngest film director, but let's also, you know, spotlight the fact that we are portraying three also equally young activists who are, you know, doing even more impressive work. Um, and we're also blessed with a very young team, but, you know, this was a team effort and it's not, it has nothing to do with my personal age, I think. But still, still, it's a lot of work, and you know how much we know how much work um, and and energy uh, that we, you need to, to to complete a feature length film shot in two countries: Chile, Uganda, and Hong Kong. Um, how did you decide to embark on this journey? Did you know from the beginning it it was going to be a feature film, or did you want to shoot a short film? And what 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 was your trigger, your hunger to start with this project? I think we as a team were quite fascinated and impressed by you know, this modern, young, also global activism, you know, which is, which can be seen all over the globe, um, that impressed us. And we were looking for potential candidates that we wanted to, you know, make a film about. But at this time, when we started the project in 2019, you know, we spent hours and nights discussing about, you know, how can we make this, how can we, have access to this activism, to this new form of young activism. Um, and then it was a team decision. We decided, I think, or we think, three protagonists, all very different from each other, would be, you know, the perfect way to go. Um, and then obviously 90 minutes feature length was, you know, suitable for that. Um, it, the time allows us to really take an in-depth look into how the protagonists are feeling, we can explore the protagonist's challenges, the risks they have to take. Um, the time just allows us to do that. But it wasn't it wasn't decided in the first place. I, I, it was more of a work in progress decision, I would say. Yeah, it was a look at the situation. I guess if we go back to, yeah, nine, to 2019, when you started to make the film, actually the planet was on fire. And I'm, I'm not talking about only about the forests, but there were 50 countries where the civil society was in the street demonstrating. Um, there were, the, you know, young, the young generation all over the globe was striking for climate. So that was mainly the trigger. But are you yourself politically involved um, co or committed? I mean, let me put it this way, we as a team, we're just, we as a film team, we're just doing our job. And our job with this project is to give a platform to these three individual voices. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to put any statements which we can't identify ourselves with. Um, but I think it's important when we speak about young modern activism, that we listen to young activists and that we have a film which is made by young filmmakers, by young independent filmmakers about young activists themselves that we can have that we can have a platform where they have an unfiltered voice um, where we can really follow their stories really follow their journeys um, this I wouldn't say I don't think it's a political statement to just do a film about you know three impressive activists obviously I can identify with some of these statements I can't identify with others um, but I think we as a film team, we are just doing our job in portraying these activists. Um, and we really want to, you know, spark or we want to contribute a small um, part into this larger debate, into this larger discussion about young activism. We can't be the only source of information, um, but I think it's just important 
to have at least one source which is really, you know, with the activists following them um, and not having, you know, any experts commenting their work, um, but just listening to them. So, of course, it's not a political statement. That's why the film is so strong and it is a creative documentary. But still, you made decisions as a filmmaker or as a team. For instance, you chose three women and not two men and one woman. And so only women and only women not from the Western world. There are many activists in Germany that you could have, uh, you know, decided to portray. No, you chose Chile, Hong Kong and Uganda and three women. So it's, it is a choice. Absolutely. I mean, let me say that we chose the protagonists based on their interest, based on their work, um, based on the facts, whether they were involved within the movement from the first day. Um, in all three countries, let me say this, and this is really important, in all three countries, we had several candidates, you know, which all could have been, who all could have been our protagonists. And we chose the most interesting, the most representative, um, and also you know, the persons we had the best feeling with because they also, you know, are collaborative. We had to follow them or we followed them for more than six weeks. So they had to, they had to agree with this. Um, and the, the gender was not a part of our decision making. Um, we would have chosen other ways if, if the other people were more interesting or more suitable for our project. Um, it wasn't our goal to make a film about three women. It was our goal to make a film about three young activists. Um, and now they are three women. And that we have chosen people from all over the world and not just from Germany or England um, has something to do with the fact that we, we wanted to present their stories as a young film team. And we saw and realized that we have the opportunity to also travel to Hong Kong or Uganda or Chile, um, we already had a feeling that, you know, German activists, for example, they, they are amazing. They're doing impressive work, but they already have their platform. And especially for us as a young, globally connected generation, it's so important that we reach out to other parts of the world as well. Not as, you know, European leaders, not at all, but it's important that we all listen to each other. And this is also not a film made by Europeans. It's a film, you know, the activists were also part in making this film. And we collaborated always with local film teams in Chile, in Hong Kong, in Uganda. We have people from more than 15 countries working on this project. So this is an internationally created film. Um, and I, for example, as a director, I, I, I'm only the servant of the film. I'm just here to communicate the ideas um, and to put this film together, but it's not that I have a clear agenda that I want to um, that I want to you know display here and anything. And, and, and why Hong Kong? Of course, it makes sense. And why Hong Kong, Chile, and Uganda? Hong Kong makes I mean two, three continents, of course. Uh, Hong Kong makes sense um, for for everyone. We understand why you choose Hong Kong, but why Uganda, not an African country, or why Chile? As uh, um, there were so many people fighting around uh, Latin America, the three choices are very interesting, and I'm wondering how you how you decided that as a team. We wanted to portray three very different movements from each other because we also wanted to explore what connects activists from around the world who are actually fighting for different causes, for different reasons. Hong Kong, obviously, for democracy. But then we have Hilda, who is fighting for climate change or fighting against climate change. But why is she fighting against it? Because she's, as she says, this is a quote now, she's a victim herself. And that, I think, is really interesting because we now have, we now have a protagonist who's sort of mm -hmm. trying to prevent something that might happen. And we have someone who's doing the work because it already happened in her past. And I think it's just a really interesting connection um, and also a very interesting difference that they all three have. Absolutely. And one, one of the many strong points of the film is that it shows that there are not different struggles in different countries. There is only one struggle and fighting for democracy, fighting against corruption, fighting for free speech or fighting for the environment is actually the same thing. It's fighting for a better world. Absolutely. And I think all our protagonists agree on the fact that we as a young generation have earned a seat on the table. And this is basically what this film is about. And it, it shows the collective global struggle 
from a young generation who's who's really trying everything, both peacefully and in other ways, to you know to have a voice in in modern decision making. Absolutely. And and so now it's the second screening and the second selection of the film, as we mentioned before. And but so it's going to have a great career, I'm sure. It's going to have a great career in festivals and in and, and, and TV stations, I hope too. But do you have an impact strategy in place? Do you have a strategy to show it also to key decision makers, stakeholders in being in Chile, Uganda or the rest of the of the planet? Absolutely. First of all, let me mention again that we have a wonderful international and very talented team who are doing everything they can to almost create a small sort of a micro movement around the film. Um, after many, you know, wonderful festivals as we are here, um, we will show this film, we'll have a German distributor, so we'll um, have a theatrical release in Germany and we'll also have numerous special screenings at universities, schools and democratic institutions where we often also invite other activists and decision makers and we are collaborating with many international institutions, like, for example, the Goethe Institute, to really show the film also in Chile, in Uganda, and perhaps even in Hong Kong, or at some places where many um, Hong Kongers fled to. Um, so that's definitely a key part of our strategy, um, definitely is to show the film to as many people and as many decision makers as possible. So the goal is to create a movement. And if people watching us want to help to this movement, they can just go on your website, I guess, and write to you and, and you'd be happy to help to show as many screenings as possible, I hope. We have a wonderful team who is, which is already, always happy to reach out to, to new possible contributors. Um, and we're more than happy about every email that we receive, definitely. Fantastic. And Franz, we have a last uh, ritual question. Do you think cinema can really trigger change? And how Absolutely. can it trigger change? Cinema, there's a, cinema has a unique power, which is that it can tell individual stories in a very, very emotional and touching way. When we speak about international conflicts, which are often so, so, so complicated, cinema can really zoom in and present one individual story, which can be more powerful than you know, reading a big newspaper article about um, the same the same conflict, and that's why I think um, cinema can give platform to individual voices, and that can ultimately um, trigger change, as we have seen before. Thank you so much, Franz. And Thank we again, really hope you. to have you in uh, one of the next editions at the festival. Actually, I'm sure we're going to have you in Geneva in one of the next editions. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm very much looking forward to it. So that was the conversation with Franz Böhm in Germany. And uh, I'm sure you, you will enjoy, you have enjoyed the film. And if you want to go further, we have an audio uh, also um, presentation and discussion around the film that you can listen to. And Hilda will participate in a discussion at the festival in an uh, Insta Live conversation. Thank you so much for listening and more information on our website, www.fifdh.org. Thank you very much.